Hi, it's me, JD, and welcome back to my channel. This is How to Create Galaxies, Part 2. In the first video, I showed you how to create galaxy backgrounds, all while making a mess. And now, in the second video, I'm showing you, well, exactly the same thing, just different ways to create a mess. But that's the fun in creating galaxy backgrounds in that they will always look like a big old hot mess until you pull it together at the very end. And no two galaxies are ever alike, but that's the fun in the creating, the practicing, and the process of using different art techniques. If you haven't seen that first video, definitely check it out. But now in this video, I'm gonna show you five more ways to create fun galaxy backgrounds. Be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell if you want to be notified next time there's a video. And then we'll jump right into the first technique. Alcohol inks are back on trend in the arts and crafts world and they make for awesome galaxies. The key to an alcohol ink galaxy background is to use alcohol ink paper in black. <laughs> The black Yupo paper just already sets the foundation for your galaxy, your solar system. So all you have to do is add the color. To help avoid any major stains on my hands, I'm going to use some protective gloves. And then I'll jump right into some of my favorite galaxy colors in purples, blues, pinks. And then oh, we're just going to get ready to drop some inks. And I'm going to be using Ranger alcohol inks, but what makes them really pop for a galaxy background is if you use the alcohol pearls, which means you have to like shake them up first to get the pearly like mixative all mixed up in there. But they add a really shimmery pearl finish on dark cardstock and it looks absolutely beautiful. So after shaking all of my alcohol ink pearls for about mm, like 10 seconds or so, I'm going to start dropping them on my Yupo paper and then move them around with my little air puffer. You can also use a straw or just tilt the paper to get that alcohol ink moving. I show a variety of different techniques in my alcohol ink video. To get the alcohol ink moving or even more diluted, you can put down some blending solution and that will also like reactivate the alcohol ink and help you move it along your surface even more. Using alcohol inks and blending solution and an air puffer gives this really pretty ethereal effect to your galaxy. And while I'm dropping off all this color onto my surface, I'm actually going to let this dry before the next technique. To help bring back some of the darkness in my spacey galaxy background, I'm going to drop some uh, black ink, some black alcohol ink, and that will help balance all of this color. And for a really fun technique, I'm going to be using some silver mixative. And so that adds a really shiny effect to your background. It works the same as the pearl uh, alcohol ink. You just got to shake it up a bit before you use it. I think I might have went overboard on the silver, but it came out, it still came out pretty cool. Stay tuned to the end of the video. And that's when I pull all of these galaxy backgrounds together. For this next way of creating a galaxy background, I'm going into this really fun medium called Glitz Glitter Gel. It's exactly as the name describes. It's a gel that's entirely made of glitter and it's 100% like opaque. There's a slight smell to it, but it's nothing unbearable. And I'm using my palette knife to help spread it around. It works like a normal mixed medium paste. I'm going to be laying it down on some pretty heavyweight black cardstock. I like using the black uh, cardstock as a nice foundation for my galaxy. And I will wipe off my palette knife before moving it on to another color. That way it doesn't dry and harden and ruin your palette knife. And now I'm moving on with some purple glitz glitter gel and you can tell that this thing, I mean, this medium is so shiny and just so pretty and so glittery. It's really fun to work with. And if it's wet, it's pretty easy to clean up as well. I just use the baby wipe to wipe off uh, my glass surface. 
as I did with the alcohol ink galaxy background I'm gonna set this aside to dry and once it is dry and it's it's hardened and it's um, pretty and now I can lay down the black glitz glitter gel over it and that way I don't have to worry about um, my palette knife scraping up some of that blue and purple color and I'm just laying this over top to create you know different layers of colors and help it resemble a space scene even more this glitter gel just adds a really fun textured dimension to my background and plus it's glittery I mean who doesn't love that I'll set this aside to dry and clean off my surface so I can move on to the next technique this is a variation of the watercolor galaxy technique in where I actually use metallic watercolors on some heavyweight black cardstock instead on my first video I believe I just used um, regular white cardstock and regular watercolors and then I discovered all these pretty pretty metallic colors that show up really well on dark cardstock so I knew they'd make for a really pretty uh, galaxy background when using watercolors it's best to use watercolor paper because it can hold a lot of water but I went with a heavyweight cardstock. I believe it's at least over a hundred pound cardstock. And it, uh, once I taped it down to my board, it really held the water relatively well. And so as you can see with the first swipe, the, it didn't turn out that great, <laughs> the metallic watercolor. But after a few initial um, br uh, paint strokes, you can see that the shimmer is really starting to come through on this metallic watercolor set. And there's no rhyme or reason to my paint strokes. I'm not a painter. I've never claimed to be. Um, I'm just showing you how the, your average layman, your average crafter can create a galaxy background. And like my other two backgrounds, as soon as I uh, let the first background dry, I'm going to go back in with a dark color and start covering some of this color up. Since I don't have a black metallic color, I'm just using regular black watercolor instead. And I will let this uh, remain taped to my board during the drying process. And for this next technique, I'm going to warn you in advance that it was an experiment that didn't quite turn out the way I intended it to, but I found a way to make it work. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my Misty stamping tool with a piece of watercolor paper. And I have this really fun galaxy background stamp and I'm doing some heat embossing with this stamp at first. So I inked up the stamp in some Versamark ink, make sure that I got full as full coverage as possible. And then I'm going to pour some embossing powder over this. This is one of the occasions where you don't have to be that neat or that uh, exact with your embossing powder. In fact, it's, it kind of makes for a uh, really fun result if your embossing, embossing powder result is kind of messy. And after my heat tool is really, really hot, I'm going to uh, bring it over to my surface and melt this powder so I get a really shiny effect with my embossing powder. And now I have my surface temporarily adhered in my Misty with a um, mixed media mat underneath uh, to help minimize the mess. And I'm gonna smoosh down some Distress Oxide ink on the door of my Misty. I'm gonna spritz that with some water and I'm gonna try to create kind of like a uh, organic like smooshed effect with uh, the Distress Oxide inks. And as you can see, it didn't uh, provide as full coverage as I wanted it to. I was like, wait, what, what's going on here? <laughs> what's, what's happening? And then I realized, oh, usually when you use a Misty, you have a stamp to get some more pressure on there. So that's when I realized I need more pressure on the back of my Misty. So I'm gonna just use this watercolor cardstock pack and place it behind there. And hopefully that will get me full coverage. But as I kept opening and swinging the door, it's not, it's still not working. So I'm like, okay, should I get more water? Um, do I, you know, really press down on this? It just wasn't, wasn't doing what I wanted it to. And then I tried it with a different ink pad. Maybe like it needed a different color or something. It wasn't as juicy, um, but that still gave me similar result. It wasn't giving me the full coverage that I intended. Although it did make a really pretty like purpley violet color. 
And now I'm trying to salvage this project. I keep uh, I kept swinging the door back and forth, trying to get as much color on there as possible. And then I thought, why don't I just take off the paper and just <laughs> soak up the excess ink that's already on my misty door? And that works, you know, it works better. But um, I still wanted this to be fully coated in really pretty purples, pinks, and blues. So that's when I decided to just put some ink on um, my surface and my block and just smoosh the color on there. The acrylic block just helps me control where the color goes. It definitely helped to fill in all those sparse white spots. And it's easy to clean up. Distress Oxide ink is really uh, easy to clean up on a slick surface. And it also stains your hand too. But it's much e easier on the hands than alcohol ink is. To add even more depth to my project, I'm gonna go in with a really dark blue shade of Distress Oxide ink. And I'm also gonna use a paintbrush to get into those little crevices. And so that heat embossing is resisting all of this ink um, and uh, all you see is this really shiny um, stamp it stamped image coming through. So now to make this more galaxy like just as the others I'm going to go in with a black color pretty much and help uh, deepen all of this color. And if you are looking for a messy project this is definitely one of them. Now for this next technique I'm going to cheat just a little bit and use galaxy cardstock now just wait don't go on to the next video yet i'm going to show you how to take this cardstock to the next level with the help of some glitter and some glossy accents you can also use like a clear elmer's glue a liquid glue but i think the glossy accent is just a little more permanent in its hold so that's why i'm using it uh, especially with glitter with loose glitter so i'm just kind of spreading this out on my galaxy um you know maybe highlight a star make some um squiggly lines and then i'm going to sprinkle my glitter over where i put the glossy accents and this just really brings out some fun shine and dimension and takes this galaxy cardstock to the next step to the next level like beyond the galaxy like to infinity and beyond hashtag not sponsored and as you saw i finally wised up and put a scrap piece of paper under my project to collect all of that loose glitter and so now i'm flicking off the excess and you can see what fun dimension this adds this is a totally a project you can do with your kids and as for that extra glitter i thought why let it go to waste because i can't put it back into cons its container so I got out another piece of scrap cardstock and I'm going in with more glossy accents um, placement and then I'm just gonna pour that excess glitter over the top and where it sticks it sticks and now I have some mixed glitter accents to my cardstock. And now this cardstock is extra textured and extra sparkly when it catches the light. So now let's pull together the other four galaxy backgrounds. I've laid them all out on my surface and they all came out pretty well, um, but they don't quite look like galaxies yet. So I'm going to get out some very shimmery white watercolor and I'm going to spritz some water on that, place in my acrylic block and start flicking this uh, watercolor off of my acrylic block to create some stars. You can use a toothbrush, but I find that I have more control with a paintbrush and an acrylic block. And this is just where the magic happens, where these kind of purple and blue blobs um, become actual galaxies with the help of some um, white quote unquote stars, if you will. And the farther away you flick from your surface, the finer mist you get of stars and the closer you are, the bigger blobs or um, droplets you get uh, you can call them planets i think in my last video i called one pluto because it was just a huge white blob but um, i've learned i've improved my techniques and now I've, I've for the most part i know how to uh control all of the star making and so once that is pretty much complete you can see how all of these galaxies came together again i'm not an artist don't claim to be but i want to show you some easy galaxy techniques Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this galaxy video and I uh, hope you stick around for the next video.